Okay, so new concept, and this is really important. This is the concept of what's called a random variable. And so we're going to stick with the world of discrete random variables for the first discussion. So, so far, everything we've talked about are kind of generic sample spaces. So our sample spaces and various problems that we worked on have looked like, you know, I flip two coins and I record the outcome. So I could have like head head, head tail, tail head, tail tail. Or I, you know, treat a patient with a drug and I observe whether I had a success or a failure. Or I flip a coin three times and I count the number of heads I got. Okay, so in most engineering applications, what we really want is a sample space that kind of has this form, something where I do an experiment and I get a number at the end. It's not really that easy to deal with sample spaces that are made up of symbols like head tail patterns or words like success failure, right? So from now on, we are going to exclusively focus on situations where we derive a numerical number from the outcome of an experiment, right? So this idea of turning everything into a number is what's called a random variable. So let's define that. So random variable x is a function that maps every outcome in the sample space to a real number, right? So it's like saying I have S, which is an outcome of the sample space, and that gets mapped to X, which is some real number. So for example, it's easy to see how my previous um, you know, sample spaces would, would map onto this concept. So if I have the sample space being uh, head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail, well, then I could say, okay, my process for driving a number from this is just to count the number of heads, right? So um, I have a mapping that goes from an outcome, head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail, to a number, two, one, one, zero, okay? And so a discrete random variable is a situation where I have a discrete set of values here for the possible results of the experiment, okay? So um, just to be super crystal clear, that's like saying I have my kind of generic sample space up here with each of these outcomes. And that gets mapped via this function to a set of numbers, a set of discrete numbers. And each of these numbers corresponds to some of the outcomes. And in this case, I can see that, you know, the random variable values 0 and 2 correspond each to one outcome. And then two of these outcomes over here originally get mapped onto one in the random variable space, right? Or I could have an infinite number of, uh, you know, random variable outcomes, right? So I could have something like, you know, I keep on flipping until I get ahead, right? And I count the number of flips. So I could say, okay, well, I have to have at least one flip and I could have two or three or four all the way out here. And each of these, um, you know, flips kind of corresponds to an underlying, perhaps symbolic outcome from the sample space. Okay. And you're, it's going to be much easier to deal with numbers one, two, three, four, than it is to deal with these patterns. Okay. And in the same way, the idea of events in the sample space carry over to events over here on the real line. So, um, you know, events, as subsets of the sample space kind of carry over to uh, events as subsets of the real line for random variables, right? So I could ask, for example, and this is like being really pedantic, really dull, right? It's like saying, okay, 
I could say, what's the probability that the random variable x was greater than or equal to 3? Okay, And that, under the hood, is like saying, what's the probability of x mapping outcomes from the original sample space to be greater than or equal to 3? It's like saying, well, it's the probability that s is in, you know, this set of original outcomes, right? So in a way, all I'm trying to say is that we had a uh, partition of the original sample space, right? So if I had um, events out here in S that partitioned the events, this is like saying these are all of the um, these are all of the outcomes in the original experiment that map to the value 1, right? So um, all outcomes in A1 map to the number x1, okay? And then I could say, okay, I can kind of ask what's the probability of, um, you know, Say I want to ask something like this. What's the probability that my random variable is in this range? Well, I look at the real line. I look at, for example, the possible outcomes of x. I say, OK, here's my range that I'm asking about for the random variable. That corresponds to, in this case, a couple of discrete random variable values. Now I go and I map back and I say, OK, this is my original sample space. These were all the values that mapped to 0. These were all the values that mapped to 1, and so on. And what I really care about is now the probability of these underlying events. right? I mean, all this is pretty straightforward. You don't even really have to think about it when it comes to random variables. But this is just to be very clear about the mapping between numbers and experiments that possibly didn't generate a number. And this is how you go back and forth. Okay? The key concept for dealing with random variables is called the probability mass function. And that's the subject of the next lesson.